Hey folks, in this video, we're gonna be diving into mandatory access control. So this is continuing on the series of videos you've been watching, understanding access control systems. We've looked at how the POSIX uh, access control system works. And now we're gonna dive into something that actually you're probably pretty familiar with, even though you haven't maybe seen or heard about it in this context. So specifically, this is a type of access control we talked about in the last video, discretionary access control, where the user is able to determine the access of objects, the sorry, the owner of the object can determine the access of the objects, mandatory access control with a system controls that, and um, originator or uh, access control. But we're gonna dive into mandatory access control. So mandatory access control uh, is actually something you've, you've probably heard about, at least in popular culture and television. So if you think about, if you've ever heard the terms like confidential, secret, top secret, um, that is actually the basis of mandatory access control. So for mandatory access control, and again, mandatory access control systems, the uh, system itself determines it. So you have security levels of both subjects and objects. As we'll get into, you can have categories, and we'll see how this changes the model. And finally, you can have uh, labels. So let's start with levels. This is the most kind of standard thing that you're familiar with. So many organizations have some kind of a hierarchical relationship between uh, the sensitivity of assets. So if you think about companies, they have some information like, um, let's say, let's use Coca-Cola, one of the largest companies uh, on earth, sells sugary, watery drinks that you maybe partake in from time to time. And their most secret asset is allegedly the um, recipe list for Coca-Cola, right? They, they that is at the highest most level of secrecy but of course they have other information their plans for the next year or five years that's pretty secret um the the social security numbers of all their employees right that's secret but they kind of uh can form a level of what's like the most kind of secret information so uh yeah one file may have like the highest security sensitivity um and so when you're designing and understanding a mandatory access control system, you want to think about these levels of important of information. And you need to actually implement this in a system. And to have a system that does this, you need some way to tag data on a computer system. And so that every object in the system has an associated security level and also every subject. So a mandatory access control system will have security levels for every piece of data and every user on the system. Um, as a way of checking, what is this kind of relationship, right? Well, a one-to-one -one doesn't really make sense. You don't have one security level for one object. That's not the point of abstraction and having levels. So usually it's, it would be one level can have many zero or many uh, pieces of data or objects that have objects and subjects that are at that security level. So let's just look at some examples. So we'll look at two examples, the commercial security levels. Uh, so this would be like a company you may, and if you work in a company, maybe your company actually has this. So you may have data that is restricted. So you have a restricted level, proprietary, sensitive, and public. So this would be in a, this is kind of a, a bottom up. So think about going from the bottom. So public data is obviously available to everyone. It's the least sensitive. You don't care if the data gets out because it's, guess what, supposed to get out. Above that would be sensitive data that you, um, that you really don't want to get out but it's not as important as proprietary data getting leaked, which is not as important as restricted data getting leaked, right? So this is one kind of corporate commercial security level system. The one you actually may be familiar with from TV shows and these kinds of things is actually the military security levels. Or if you uh, are somebody who served in the armed forces, maybe you're in like really aware of this. So those from the top down are top secret is the highest le security level and then secret and then confidential and then unclassified. Um, so those are kind of uh, the levels here. And so <clears throat> we have, again, remember, we have levels associated with objects and with subjects. And so what kind of policy do we want? So mandatory access control system is the uh, can enforce our policy for us, right? The system itself will enforce it. But what policy do we want to enforce? So let's use the military example. We have top secret, secret, confidential, unclassified. So intuitively, right? And this is probably a good place to just check yourself, pause the video, ask yourself like, okay, what, what do I want this policy to do? And we'll talk about information, right? So if we use the military example, we really want it to be the case that our top secret information doesn't flow out there because that could have disastrous military consequences, right? Whereas unclassified information, we actually don't care 
that much if it gets out there, right? So you can think about using these labels as the impact, let's say, to national security or whatever the military um, objective is based on uh, these different levels. And so the what we'd want, right, is so that um, we want to restrict data to only those people that have access. So our subjects are going to have these levels. So we have somebody with, let's say, secret clearance. They should probably only be able to read information at the secret level or lower, right? They can read confidential information, unclassified information, but they shouldn't be able to read top secret information. That's pretty clear. Uh, a question is to think about writing. What should they be able to write? But before we get into that, let's introduce some notion because um, one of the really cool things and why we're diving into this and understanding this is not just because A, this this like military mandatory access control model is used in a ton of places and it's actually something you've probably seen, but we won't do the proving, but we'll show how by setting it, it up and having certain properties of the system, you can actually guarantee that information can't leak out. Um, so, okay, let's set up some notation. So first we're going to have, so this is a lowercase L. I know it's a little bit wonky on this font, but the L of S is the security clearance of subject S. So right now we're just dealing with levels. So that'll be the levels. Again, a level clearance is the same thing. So you can think of this as like in the, the data is tagged at a security level and subjects have security clearances, but functionally they're the same thing, uh, where L of O. So L lowercase low is this is the security classification of the object S. So the level of object, the level of S. And then for this, whatever, however many security classifications we have, right? So we had unclassified, classified, secret, top secret. Uh, they form a hierarchy, right? This is all this is saying. So starting from L zero uh, to K minus one. So there's K security levels that the level at I is less than the level of I plus one. We're just kind of essentially defining what does less than mean in our security classification. So here, secret would be less than top secret and classified would be less than top secret and unclassified would be less than top secret. You can see how that works. So we have a total ordering of the security classifications here. Now, what do we actually want to have happen? So let's remember our examples. Right, let's go back here to our examples. So when reading, what's the policy that we want to read? Well, what's our overriding goal? Our overriding goal is that no information is able to leak out. So we don't want top secret information to be accessed by people that don't have top secret clearance. Okay. <coughs> now, this is the reading aspect here is very trivial. So just like we said, so we have a, a subject has a a classification level. So if that and the object has a classification level, and if I am at the level, so if the subject is at top secret, they can read top secret information, or they can read anything below it. Um, and if you're at the confidential level, you can read confidential information, you can't, you can read unclassified information. If you're at the confidential level, should you be able to read secret information? No, should you be able to read top secret information? Absolutely not, because that violates our overriding security principle that you should never have a leakage of data. Okay, so with that in mind, the condition for reading is actually very simple. So a subject can read an object if and only if the level of the object is less than or equal to the level of the subject. And you can think of that visually uh, as reading down. So if you think about you are a subject, you have top secret, you can read at your level or down. So if you're at confidential, you can read at confidential or down, uh, but you can't read secret and you can't read top secret, right? You can't read up. So by enforcing reading down, this is great. You can never have data leak out, but, and this is this notate, uh, this security condition, S can read O and if, if and only if the level of O is less than or equal to the level of S, that's just formally verifying it based on uh, formally stating what we had just said based on our notation. But what about writing? Right, this is where it gets tricky. So let's think about it. Okay, if I'm at the secret level, what data and information can I read? Well, I can read secret data, I can read confidential data, I can read unclassified data. Now, 
what when I write data, what data, like what can that uh, data be in? And the way you have to think about this is what type of information could I be putting in that data? And can that cause data to leak? So for instance, if I'm at the secret clearance level and I create an unclassified document, does that violate my overriding security principle that I'm trying to enforce here? And the way to think about this is not thinking about, oh, well, yes, let's say I am reading unclassified data and I'm just writing unclassified data. The question is, is it ever the case that that can leak data? And you think, well, of course, I read a confidential file as secret. I can read that. And then I write it out unclassified. And then boom, now I've leaked confidential data as unclassified. And I can also do the similar thing, reading secret data and writing it out as confidential, right? So the fact is, if I'm allowed to write to a lower security level, there's a possibility that I can leak data. But so what if I if I'm at the secret level, can I write a secret data content? Right, so I can put secret data in there. I can put confidential data, unclassified data, put it into a SQL fi secret file. Who can read that? Well, the only people that can read that are, ha are at the level secret or above. So I'm not leaking any data because that's data they could already read. What about writing data up? Right. So let's say I write take secret data. I create a top secret file, which I can't read after I create it. I create it, put the data in there. I can't read it. Is it possible for me to leak any data that way? Right? The answer is no, it's not possible for me to leak data, even though that file has a higher uh, security clearance level. The information that is contained in there is only at my level of what I can read, secret or below. So this is so we can, what we're getting at is we've kind of derived a policy where we can read down, we can read at our level or lower, and we can write up. So we can write at our level or higher. And we won't go into it and prove it, but it turns out if you do that, then you can actually prove that information leakage is impossible. This is called the, the first version was the simple security condition, uh, making sure so reading, we can read down. And the star property is the right property. And so S can write to O if and only if the level of S is less than or equal to the object. So remember, it's going up. So we're going, the level of S has to be less than or equal to O. And so this is works in exactly these two, whatever that your levels are, you can read data down. So if you are at whatever security level you, the subject is at, you can read data at that level or down, and you can write data at your level and up. And by enforcing this, this enforces that it's never possible for data to leak. Now, you, of course, smart person watching this video, uh, you, of course, can see that, wow, this would be a really painful process, right? Because let's say you have top secret clearance, you could never go home and write a letter to your partner, right? Because that would be an unclassified letter. And hey, you could be leaking state secrets there. So th this is like, a, again, it's this is a model of a mandatory access control system. And the cool thing is, and why we have models is so that we can prove that if you follow this model, you get these properties. Uh, also, we actually know that data, there is a process for data to be released, right? For data to go from secret to unclassified. Um, and that can be through redacting content. So there's, you know, you can make this model more and more complicated and real systems have really complex um, actual implementations of models that you have to think about. Um, and so, but by capturing it in this model, we can reason about it, which I think is super cool. But these levels are kind of still, we still have this downside where if top secret is the highest security clearance, and let's say you fine reader watching this are a nuclear engineer, you have top secret clearance because you're needed for a nuclear uh, weapons development. Does that mean and let's say also at the top secret level is the location of all of the current nuclear subs that the US has on Earth. Should you working on a project, a weapons project, know about the location of sensitive military um, things like the nuclear subs? The answer is probably not, right? You, there's no reason you need to know that. And so this problem with just working with this levels, again, it goes back to the least privilege principle, right? 
So just having a level of top secret, you can read anything at that level, even if it's not related to what you need to do your job. And so that's why this model is actually too simplistic and needs to be extended with categories. Um, and so that's what, if you've kind of, uh, usually they kind of like um, uh, display this in media as like a, a need to know basis, right? Well, you don't need to know this, right? And that's kind of what categories are trying to get people to do. So by adding categories, you can think of now not each subject and each data not only has a security level. So we still have levels and those are always needs to be enforced. We then have categories where an, a subject or an object can be tagged with zero or more categories. And we'll think about these in terms of sets because we're computer scientists. That's what we like to do. And so as an example, let's say we have the categories of nuclear, NATO, an ACE, which I think I think these were real categories I looked up at one point, and ACE was some weapon system. Um, and so this way we can actually say that, hey, you can have top secret clearance, but not have any of these categories because it's not relevant to you. Or if you are involved in NATO, you can get top secret clearance with the NATO category, and then you can see that data. But of course, we'd want to, now the question becomes, how do we enforce with the mandatory access control system that you can't uh, come up with that? Um, so now the question is, how do we define this policy? Well, we're going to need more notation. And don't freak out. This is very easy. We're just thinking about sets uh, now. So now, like we said, so a it's not just a security level, right? So now every subject and every object has a security level L and, and objects um, and a C, a set of categories. So C is now going to be a set thinking about it in terms of types, the types of these. L is a level, which we saw is basically, you can think of as an integer because it's an ordered set of levels. And C is a category, which is a set. So now, how do we say that a subject S, subject uh, S1, has an object O1? How do we tell whether it has access? So an important thing to remember is we always want to keep in mind this, the levels, right? So these need to hold. We want the levels to still hold. But within, like, let's say, so, but we need to preserve the property that data from a nuclear category should never leak to somebody who has non-nuclear. So if we think about, okay, I have, let's go back here. So we have these security levels. Now we have categories. So if I have an object, let's say I have a subject that's secret and a object that is confidential, I want to read it, right? Secret should always be able to, we can read down. So secret should read confidential, but I have nuclear category and the object has nuclear and NATO. Should I be able to read that? Right? The answer should be no, because I could be leaking information about NATO to myself, which I don't have access to that. So that would be bad, even though it's a confidential document, right? That's what's super important is even though the level said, yeah, secret should be able to read confidential. But because the data is tagged with these categories, because I only have access to nuclear and the confidential information has nuclear and NATO, I don't need to know anything about NATO. Therefore, I should not be able to read that. So, but if I have nuclear and the and the uh, data is at confidential and is nuclear, I should definitely be able to read it. And if the data has no categories, I should also be able to read that, right? So what, and <clears throat> the really cool thing is we actually, because we're using uh, with the levels, we were using less than uh, to order them. With C, when these categories, because we have sets, we actually have a, subset relationship and we can put these in what's called a lattice this actually comes up in a ton of different things but we have at the bottom of our lattice the empty set and so we have um we have this relationship where the empty set is a subset of the set containing nuclear the empty set is a subset of the set containing nato the empty set is a subset of this of the of the um so there's an edge here to denote this subset relationship uh, is nuclear, the set of nuclear, a subset of the set containing NATO? No. Is the set containing NATO a subset of the set containing nuclear? 
Also, no. So there's no edge between these, right? Those are, they don't work either way. Um, but if we have the set containing nuclear and NATO, both the set containing nuclear is a subset of that. The set containing NATO is a subset of the set containing nuclear and NATO and the empty set. So it's actually a transitive property, right? The empty set is a subset of the set containing nuclear and the set containing NATO. This continues uh, extending this uh, lattice. And at the very top, we have the set containing everything, right? The set containing nuclear, NATO, and ACE. So now what does this become? So let's say the levels are all satisfied, right? We used our previous um, things and we checked here and we said, okay, great. So we have the security level of S. Uh, what we can use is looking at this lattice, we can say, okay, if I have a subject of nuclear and NATO, can they read something that is nuclear and ACE, right? So the subject of nuclear and NATO, can they read something of nuclear and ACE? The answer is no, because they could leak something about ACE. But if they have nuclear and NATO, can they read something with the set containing NATO? Yes. The set containing nuke? Yes. And the set containing the empty set? Yes. So what we're doing here is doing subset relation, right? If the object, if these categories of the object are a subset of the categories of the, su of the subject, then we can read that. And we can actually use this visually, and this is a read down of the lattice, right? So nuclear NATO, anything below that. But again, remember, this isn't a total ordering like uh, the like the levels, right? There are cases where it's not, I mean, there is, it's not a subset, right? And it's not a subset because it could be greater than nuclear NATO and ACE, right? Or because it's completely different, uh, the set containing ACE. Right, but the second containing ace is not a subset of nuclear and NATO. That's why we can't read. So we can read down on the lattice, and by the same reasoning we had before, we can write up on the lattice. So if we have the empty set, we can write categories to the empty set. Again, always making sure that the security levels are maintained. We can write to this empty set, or we can write anything up. We can create a document that is has everything: nuclear, NATO, and ace. And we're not leaking any data out. So this is a model that was created by two folks, Bell and LaPadula. It is one of the most uh, famous access control models. So it's definitely something you should remember, Bell and LaPadula. This is why you're you'll be there are um, assignments in this module and levels to help you understand this model and actually apply this. Um, and so oh, one of the things we didn't talk about is uh, this is a dominates relationship, is what it's called. So nuclear and NATO. Uh, dominates the set, the empty set or the set containing NATO. And that just means there's a path here in this graph. And so we say the security level LC dominates the security level L prime C prime if and only if L prime is less than or equal to L, right? So we first compare the levels. So L is less than or equal to L. And C prime is a subset or the same set as C. And then by defining this dominates relationship, we can then define our security conditions with a simple security condition that S can read O if and only if S dominates O. So this is read down using dominates instead of just less than because we have this now set relationship of the, the categories. And then the star property is the opposite. So S can write to O if and only if O dominates S. So this is the write up model. So let's uh, go over... Some examples, so A has top secret and the set containing uh, ace. B has secret and the set containing NATO and ace. So can A read a top secret document that has no categories? So first thing to think about, sets, read down. So I'm reading a top secret document with top secret. Yes, that's good. Now compare the categories. Is the empty set a subset of the set containing ace? Yes, I'm not leaking any extra information to myself. That's the double check. So yes, A, that can read that. Uh, can A write to S? So can A create a secret document and which has the set containing ace? First thing we do, check the levels. I have top secret. Can I write a secret document? Eh, I should not be able to write a secret document because that violates the write down property because I'm a top secret. I can only write at my level or up. So by writing a secret document, I could leak out top secret information and so on and so forth. So you can go through reasoning about all of this. 
Uh, I'm going to leave this here so that you can work on these on your own to double check uh, that you understand how to apply this model. And so this is super cool. You can model these systems and then prove things about this model, which proves that you can actually try to control information in, a, in an abstracted model of the system. So that's why this stuff is important and uh, good to learn. So thanks. Bye.